Welcome to Fusion Beads. Today I'm going to show you how to make these colorful blossom earrings. So they come in five yummy colors. I have a royal red delight. I have the lotus pink delight, orange glow delight, the silky sage delight, and the royal blue delight. So these all feature the D-Lite Crystal Rivlies, and then they also feature the 3mm Shimmer and Shimmer 2 times Swarovski Crystal Bicone Beads, and then two sizes of seed beads. So let's take a look at all the products and tools we'll need to make them. Okay, so for the example that I was going to show you guys today, I went ahead with the Silky Sage colorway. So for this project, I will be using size 15 teal lined crystal AB Japanese seed beads. I have size 11 metallic galvanized silver delica beads. I have a 14 millimeter silky sage delight Swarovski crystal rivoli. I have three millimeter aronite shimmer two times Swarovski crystal bicone beads. I have a 14 millimeter sterling silver French ear wire. And then I have the six pound black satin fireline beading thread. For our tools today, we will just need tulip needles size 11, my chain nose pliers, and then I have my Xeron thread and fiber scissors. So I'm gonna get set up and we'll get started. Okay, so to get started, I went ahead and I threaded a needle with about six feet of beading thread. I have a little bit shorter length just for the ease of this video, but about six feet is what you're gonna need. And we're gonna, to do our first round, first rounds one and two, you need to string on 36 beads. So I've already got on here 34. I just kind of wrap the thread around my fingers there just to kind of provide a stop. So I'm just gonna pick up two more beads for a total of 36. It's important that you make sure that um, you have the exact number because this um, size will fit around that bezel. So I always, once I string my beads, I double count them again just to be sure because once you start make, doing the peyote bezel, if you are an off a bead and it's like only 35, your bezel will not come, will not work out. So it definitely needs to be an even number and it'll be 36. So you're gonna go ahead and take the two ends and you're just gonna tie an overhand knot to bring your tail thread and your working thread together to create a ring. So I bring them, just bring it down here. And I always like to do like a second knot just to make sure that it's really gonna hold. Make sure none of the beads get in the wrong spot there. Okay, I think we got it here. So it doesn't have to be like super, super tight because you're gonna go back through all those beads, but it's nice to have a knot there to kind of give us a starting point. There we go, all right. All right, so I've got strung on my 36 beads. I went ahead and I made a ring. There we go, <laughs> had a little bit of too much space in there. So now at this point, I'm just gonna go back through all the beads one more time, just to um, make sure I've got a nice, that they're all on there. I know they're all on there, but just to make sure that they're all very secure and then we'll start our actual peyote stitch. So right now I'm just gonna go back through the 36 delicas that we've strung. Again, when you're going back through beads, just take care not to skip over one. Cause sometimes it's easy, you know, when you're trying to pick up a whole bunch there at a time. So I always just flip it over to make sure my needles didn't pop out because um, if it does, you'll see the thread on the outside of the bead and we do not want that. So you're just going just back through all those beads one more time and then we'll begin the stitching. And these bezels really do whip up pretty quickly once you get going. Again, just make sure you're getting through all the beads there. Got a few more to go through. All right, so then I always 
go through those last few beads and then I pass over one so that I'm not at that where they have the knot, you're just going in that next bead. Then that way it um, closes that if there's any bit of a gap there or anything. I think my tail, yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. All right, so now I've gone through all my beads at least a second time. And then I just went through the first bead one more time. I'm just gonna turn it around so it's easier for me to start stitching. And now at this point, I'm just ready to pick up one Delica because we're just doing um, basic peyote here. So I'm coming out, you can see my thread here. I'm coming out between those two beads there. I've picked up one bead. So I'm gonna skip over one bead and I'm gonna go down into the next bead. And come up so you can see that. And then I'm just gonna put up my finger on there and pull everything down. And then I'll show you where that bead will kind of seat up there. So then, a little tighter. All right, so then you can see, it's like I just started our little peyote. So then I pick up another bead. Cause you're coming out this bead. You're always, you always um, skip over one bead. So you're coming out this bead, skip over the next bead and then go down through the next bead, pulling everything down nice and tight so that it locks into place. And see, you can just barely see that little peyote stitch just starting to go. So we're gonna just do this until we um, get all the way around the bezel. And this is gonna be, this is our third round because you strung rounds one and two earlier. So you'll be adding 18 beads, just making sure you're always um, skipping over one when you're adding one. Yep. All right. So see there, we got that little peyote. It's coming along. So I'm just gonna keep going. Again, just making sure you're always skipping over one bead when you're adding one in there. Yep. There we go. And make sure you're pulling everything nice and tight. You want them to, to seat up like that so they're on top of each other. If they're not, you need to kind of massage them into place. Sometimes the first couple, you need to kind of like pop into place there a little bit. But most of the time after you have a couple of, a couple of stitches, then it just seats right up, so. So you're just gonna to continue to go all the way around until you've added 18 delicates. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue that same process, just adding one delica um, around here, skipping, skipping at least one bead. So you'll just add 18 delicas in this round. So I'm just gonna continue that and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I went ahead and I've added all the beads around except for one. We're just gonna do that last one. But something I should have mentioned when I didn't mention earlier when we first started this, I already know, cause I've made a bunch of these, that 36 beads around is the perfect size that fits the 14 millimeter Reveille. But if you didn't, if you were doing like a, say a 12 millimeter, you need a few less beads, you would just string beads until you make sure that it, um, your, that it fits around your Rivoli. And then that's way, that's how you can kind of figure out how many beads around you need. So I, knew, I already knew I needed 36 from doing it. So I've got those on there. I've done my um, third round of peyote. I just have one more bead of the Delicas in this third round to do. Just wanted to show you that one more time. So this is my last one coming out, that bead there, and then skipping one and going into the next bead. And this will complete the third round three. And got a little bit of a knot there. Let's see if I can pull it through. Ah, we did. Whew, all right. You can always condition your thread too. I didn't this time, but sometimes I do. It just kind of depends on how I'm, how I'm feeling about it. All right, so I've completed my third round here. And now I'm ready to do 
my fourth round. And in this round, we're going to start kind of bringing the end, bringing the sides in together to um, go around the bezel. So we'll be working on the 15s. So I'm coming out this one last bead here. So I just need to step up to the next row that we just stitched. And then I will just add 15s in between each of the delicas and start kind of cinching this up. You can, um, if you want, you can put your Rivoli in there and kind of like hold it as you're stitching. I find at this stage it's pretty wobbly still. So a lot of times I wait and put it in like after I've done a couple rounds of 15s, just cause it's kind of hard to hold the beadwork and the Rivoli in there. So we've finished our third round. Now we're ready to start our fourth round, which is gonna be the size 15s. So in the same way that we did the third round, we're just gonna add one bead in between each. But instead of having to pop down, they're already popped up. So this, at this point, makes it super easy because we already know, like, we're just going to bridge two right there. So you come out this bead, add a 15, and then go into the bead right next to it. And then just repeat. And we tried to choose a color that complemented the um, Rivoli shade, but you could um, do it all in silver. You don't have to have a complementary color. It's just kind of fun as it comes down around the... Um, the Rivoli, if a color is kind of mimics it, it just kind of gives it a, a pretty look, we think. So I'm just going to continue to add 15s in between each of the Delicas. And as you start to do that, obviously your 15s are smaller than your 11 size Delicas and the 15s are rounds, not Delicas. So you can see it starts to kind of like just starting to cinch that up. So this is where we will start to kind of see our, our actual shape come together so that we can pop the Rivoli in there. So I'm just going to continue adding 15s between each 11. Until I've got all the way around. And then just making sure you're pulling everything nice and tight. And you can see how it's starting to curve there. It's kind of hard to see on the silver because the silver is kind of so um, harsh with the lights but you can see it's starting to kind of curve. So I'm just going to continue to add 15s between each of the 11 Delicas in this round until I get to the top and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've almost completed my fourth round. I just need to add one more 15. So at this point, I am going to pop my crystal in there. I'm just going to pull real tight on my working thread there. So I'm just going to pop it in there. And then I'm going to, you kind of have to hold the back because it's not, there's not enough beads in there to actually hold it at this point. So I'm ready to add one last 15 for my fourth round there, just in between those 11s there, coming out of one and going right into the next. And then you're also going to go th through that next 15 there because we're stepping up for the next round. And then we'll do one more round of 15s. And this is where it really starts to like cinch around. And as you can see, it like kind of pops out. So I just pop it back in there. And so now I'm ready to do the next round. The next round is just another round of 15s. So this will be the last round on this side. So we're just working on that last little section here. So this one, you, um, you're going through a 15. It's gonna be really hard to see. You're going through this 15, you're coming out of it and then you're going into the next 15. At this point, you shouldn't be going through any Delicas because we've already added all of those for that round. So now we're just doing the next round. And see, it is kind of fiddly, so I'm just gonna drop that crystal because it kind of is annoying to try to hold it in place. <laughs> all right. So coming out that 15, going into the next one. I want to make sure I'm not going through that thread. No, okay. And just pick up another one. So you're coming out that 15 and you're going into that next guy right there. Just a few more. But I think you guys get the point. You know, you're always going to be coming out of a 15 and going into the next 15 for this round. And then this will be the last round, like I said, on the front here. So I'm just going to continue adding 15s between each of the other 
15s from the third row and this fourth row. So I'm going to complete that all the way around and then we'll work our way to the back and we'll do the 15s again. So I'm just going to finish this front all the way around. And by then this will probably be pretty tight. So it should hold my crystal a lot better. So I'll pop it back in before I get it all the way to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and then we'll be right back. So now I've just got one more bead to add in this last round. It's a little hard to see because the seed bead color is very close to the crystal, but I'm coming out this 15. I'm gonna pick up a 15 and I'm gonna go into this 15 here. So this will be the last bead on this round. And then this will really cinch up this front. So I'm just gonna pull that down and make sure you're pulling everything really nice and tight. So now, that is one part of our bezel there. So you can see the Rivoli is still kind of like a little wonky in there just because we have to do the other side and kind of like get that seated up. So now that we've done two rows of 15s on the front, they're a little curled up so you can't see them, but now we're ready to um, move our thread or our needle. We're gonna weave to get to the back and then we're gonna do two rounds of 15 on the back. So I'm just gonna stair step, just kind of keeping in the same like peyote stair step up to beads to get myself to the back side there. So you just want to make sure you're coming out an 11 on the back. Just trying to see where my, my thread is out here. So, all right, here we go. Step over there and there. Okay. So you can see I'm coming out the back now. So I'm going to pull that and then I'm going to flip it over here. All right, sorry there's so many fingers, but kind of hard to hold, but I want to be able to show you guys it up close so you can kind of see the, the stitches. All right, so now, whoop, got to step down one more time, so I'm actually ready to begin my, my next round here. So just stepping down to, the, to that 11. All right, I'll get my tail out of there. So now we're coming out of this 11 right here. Put my thumb under there. That 11, we're going to grab a 15 and we're going to go into the next 11. And we'll do two rounds of 15s on the back. And at this point, it starts to get fairly tight. So you want to make sure that crystal stays in there. Even if it kind of wonks around a little bit, you want to make sure that it stays in there as it starts to kind of form that bezel around it. Pick up one more 15. So we're just coming out of that 11, skipping over that gap, and then going in the next 11 that's popped up. So really peyote stitch, the best thing to remember is you're always just going through the bead that's popped up. Sometimes when you're like on your second round of 15s, that 15 might not be super popped up, but it's like you can always kind of tell the next bead that you should go through. So I'm skipping over one and then going through the next 11 here that is popped up. All right, so I'm just going to continue this process all the way around this bezel until I have um, my fourth round of 15s on the back here. So I'm going to keep stitching around, just adding 15s between each of the 11 delicas that are popped up until we get back to the top. And we'll be right back. Okay, so I've almost completed my fourth round here. I just need to add one more size 15 to finish this round and then I'll step up to do the next round. So I'm gonna go through that 11, and then I'm gonna go through the next 15 that's popped up there to step up to that next round. So you can see that beat right there. So I'm stepping up, and this will be my last round here on the back. Again, just make sure you're pulling everything nice and tight. And you'll notice that even mine is still kind of loose because we always have to go back and kind of reinforce it, and that will help tighten it up. So don't be nervous if yours is kind of loose and like you're having a hard time holding the crystal in. It's just kind of the nature of this design that sometimes it's a little, a little wobbly until you reinforce the heck out of it. So now that I'm stepped up, I'm ready to begin my fifth row here on the back, or I guess I'd be the fifth, sixth, seventh, seventh row if we're just counting them all together, but I just kind of go back and front. So our last row on the back, I'm just adding the 15s between every 15 that's popped up. Just doing basic peyote here. And I'm just going to do that until I get all the way around. Sorry, went a little off camera. 
Again, just adding a 15 between each of the 15s that are popped up. And then just make sure you're pulling everything nice and tight. Because you really need everything to be pretty tight so that it does kind of seat up around that rivoli. So a lot of times I just kind of give it a nice good tug there. All right, I'm just gonna keep stitching up my 15s and complete this last round. And then I'll show you how to add a loop to attach your ear wire. And then I'll show you how to do this embellishment here. So if you were just gonna do like a basic peyote and you didn't want the, the bicone edges, after I finish this round and reinforce, we would just stop. But we wanna add these little bicones for a little pico. So I'm just gonna keep doing this last round, adding 15s between every 15 here, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I completed my last round on the back here. So now you can see it's pretty well seated up here, but um, I always recommend just going at least back through the 15s just one more time, and then that will help really kind of cinch up that little, the fold that covers your Rivoli. So this is obviously is our back, and this is our front. And if you get it on there and like more is covered on one side, you can always just kind of move your bezel around because you can kind of see it moves just ever so slightly. So do make sure, you know, take care and make sure it's like nice and centered over your crystal. So now at this point, I'm just ready to step up. I'm going to find where my thread is back here on the back. I'm ready to step up and I'm going to create a loop to hang in the earring from. And this is after I went ahead and I reinforced. You wanna make sure you reinforce um, both sides of the 15s in the front and the back. That just helps kind of cinch up your Rivoli. So I've already done that. And now I'm just stepping up to the first round here of peyote that we had. And I wanna make sure that I'm coming out of one, the row that has just the one Delica bead there. So I'm coming through that bead. Then I'm going to pick up seven 15s because the seven 15s are gonna create the loop that I'm going to hang my ear wire from. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick those up. Seven, so I have seven, you're gonna bring those down. And then you, do, you want to go back through the first bead that you just strung. So you want to go back through your first one to create a loop, making sure not to go through the other ones because we want the loop to come around. So I'm coming, I picked up that 15, I'm coming out this 11, and then I'm going to go over to the next single 11 in that one of the first rounds that we did there. I'm just going to pull that down. And this will create our loop. Let's pull it really tight, and then that creates our little loop that we're going to hang our ear wire from and stuff. So at this point, um, we need to reinforce this. But what I found was easiest with these earrings is that I went ahead and I created my loop first. Then I did all the pico all the way around, and then I went through that loop one more time to reinforce, and then I um, weaved off my thread and trimmed it. So I found that that just worked easier. You could go ahead and do a turnaround to get back in the correct direction to reinforce from this way, but it was easier to start with it, do all your pico, and then go th back through it one more time instead of having to try to turn around. So now at this point, I'm ready to start my pico. So this is kind of where the fun part comes in. Um, we're gonna do a pico where we add um, one three millimeter bicone and um, one size 15 on there. So if you wanted just a very traditional, the bare bones, like minimum bezel, this is where you would stop. You would go ahead and create your loop. Then you'd want to go back and um, reinforce that. And then you would weave off your thread and trim. And this is just a very simple peyote bezel. But we wanted to take it to the next level with a little bit of pico. So we're going to go ahead and pick up a three mil bicone and a size 15. I'm just going to bring those down here. All right, so then I wanna go back through just the bicone because we want that little that little seed bead just to kind of sit there on the edge of that bicone to create a cute little pico. 
So you don't want to go back through the 15 or it will just pop off, obviously. So we're going back down through that bicone and we're coming out of this single 11 right there. And you're going to go into the next single 11. So you're always kind of like stitching over or your beads are going to sit over those where it um, has the two. Your beads will kind of sit right over those two delicas right there. And then you just pull that baby tight, really nice and tight because you want to have that guy seat up there and they'll pop out. And then you have this cute little pico. So I'm just going to do a couple more. So picking up a three millimeter and a size 15, going back down through the three mil bicone. So you're coming out of that 11, you're skipping over these, this bridge of two, and you're going into the next single 11. Just remember, you're always going to, into the round that just has a single silver Delica bead there. And there, you got your second little. So you just continue, same fashion, all the way around here. There, going back down through your bicone, and then going into the next single 11 there in your first rounds. All right. Again, just make sure you pull everything nice, nice and tight there. So there you have that little Pico. And so I'm just gonna continue that, just adding a three millimeter bicone and a 15, and then going back just through the bicone and going into the next round all the way around. You will add 17 three mil bicones to this um, peyote bezel. And then you'll just have this nice little fringe that goes all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and continue adding one three mil bicone and one size 15, bringing everything down and then going back through just the bicone and then going into the next single 11. And just make sure when you're going back through this that you're only going through the one bead and it doesn't start to go out through another bead. All right. Oh, it's got a little stuck in there. There we go. All right. And two, take care once you do the peak coat because it's really easy is to get your thread caught around one of these as you're tightening down. So just make sure to kind of look and make sure it's not, your thread isn't caught on that because sometimes you'll just be stitching away and you won't notice until you look at it later. And then if you take that thread off, obviously it's going to make all your pico kind of um, loose. So just make sure that you don't, it doesn't catch on any of those beads as you're stitching up. So I'm just going to continue to add the bicones all the way around till you have 17 bicones on there. And then we'll be right back. Okay. As you can see, I went ahead and I added the pico all the way around. So I just continue to add one three millimeter bicone and a size 15 and then go back through the bicone and go into the next Delica bead available. So that is all done. And I went ahead and I already reinforced um, my little loop here. You definitely want to make sure that you reinforce it at least twice, going through it at least twice, because obviously that's where your ear wire is going to hang from and it's going to get the most kind of like wear and tear per se. So now I'm just coming out that bead. And now all I'm going to do is just weave back and forth following the peyote pattern just to finish off my thread. And I'm just going to do it on the back side here. So I'm coming out of that 11 because I just got done reinforcing the loop here. So I'm just going to jump to the next 11 and then go down to that 15. There. Again, taking care to make sure my loop doesn't get wrapped around anything. And I'm just going to go back and forth. For our next round. So I'm just going to go through a couple of 15s here and then probably jump back into the 11s just to kind of weave this off. I already weaved in my tail thread and trimmed that. And you can go back through and weave um, around as much as you want, but given the nature of peyote with the stair step, it normally is pretty um, secure. If you just keep following that same pattern here. Get through that. Okay. 
So again, I would just continue just to weave down through there. It's really hard to kind of see at this point because there's so much stuff going on, but just weave back and through on your pattern. And then once you're done, you want to just go ahead and trim your, your working thread as close to the beadwork as possible. You can also use a thread burner if you like. So now it's like my little guy is all pretty much done. All I need to do is to add my ear wire. So to do that, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and you're going to open the ear wire by grabbing the side there that has an opening and just pulling one side towards you. Then you're just going to slide that loop on to the loop that you made with the seed beads onto this ear wire. And then you'll close the ear wire just by moving it back to its original position. And then I always just look in the front and make sure it's nice and straight and everything. And there you have these really cute little silky sage earrings. So remember you can make them in silky sage or just bring it back all the other ones here. They have, they come in lots of different colors. So um, just to kind of go over that again, we have the royal red, we have the lotus pink, we have the orange glow, Here's our silky sage, and then we've got the royal blue. So thank you for checking out this video. And if you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to click the subscription button below.